What's the greatest invention of the past 200 years? The car, antibiotics, baseball? How about indoor plumbing? Just think of it. You flush and it's out of sight, out of mind. But for wastewater experts, that's when the work begins. And lately, a raft of products labeled flushable are clogging up the works. Barry Orr is a sewer outreach and control inspector for the City of London, Ontario, and he joins us now for more. You have one of the best ties I've ever seen. Can we get a close-up of this guy's tie, please? Let's look at this. Um, a, a very nice picture, and the statement says it all. Toilets are not garbage cans. Do we treat them that way? Yeah, unfortunately, Steve, we do. So we do, eh? Thanks for having me here today. <laughs> Clogged sewer pipes, how big a problem? Locally, nationally, and internationally, we are having a real problem. Uh, got a price tag you want to put on it? Currently across Canada, uh, we estimate $250 million is being wasted every year because people are treating the toilet like a garbage can. No kidding. Biggest culprit is what? Well, grease is a real problem for us. And then when you mix grease and uh, non-flushable material, they turn into these things that are called fatbergs. Fatbergs? Fatbergs. F-A-T. B-E-R-G. Yes. Well, what does that mean? Well, it came from the United Kingdom when uh, congealed fats and wipes of all sorts congealed and they had to remove a 15-ton blockage. No kidding. Yes. Okay. Sheldon, you want to bring the first picture up here? Let's take a look at this thing. What are we looking at? Uh, you're looking at a combined sewer overflow that is inundated with uh, garbage material from people putting it in the toilet. And the material overwhelmingly that's problematic is, what, the wipes? Yeah. Which, I mean, why wipes in particular? Because uh, we love the convenience of using wipes, and there's wipes for many, many things out there today. You can get wipes for your boots, your barbecue, your bum, your face, <laughs> all kinds of wipes. Yeah, okay. Should we do a little show and tell here? Sure. What'd you bring? Uh, I brought you um, some toilet tissue that's been in there. Okay. And you, you can see that it falls apart into small little pieces. So this is regular toilet paper? Yeah. And it's inside what, just regular water? Just regular water. For how long has it been in there? Uh, seconds. We, oh, just this, before we started the show, you, you know, you put toilet tissue, you shake it up, it falls apart. So it breaks down a little bit, but not very much, actually. Well, when you put the microorganisms in there that are at wastewater treatment facilities, they break that down because it's all natural cellulose. Got it. No problem so for us. So this is not the problem. Okay. <laughs> for 150 years, it hasn't been the problem. So putting this one aside, okay. you want to go to this one now? Well, sure. All right, let's take a look at this one. Now... This, is, this looks like a good old-fashioned, you wipe my face, you wipe my tush, kind of a wipe. Yeah, and, and it was labeled flushable. So people think that they can put that into their toilet. Right. How long has this been inside the water? Three and a half years. Three and a half years. You've had this wipe inside this bottle of water for three and a half years? That's correct. It has not. Okay, I'm going to do a little mm -hmm. compare and contrast here. It does not seem to have broken down, or biodegraded, or whatever the right word is, as much as the good old-fashioned toilet paper has. Well, I brought you that wipe, and so you can see what I'm doing here. Stretching, With... stretching. <laughs> okay. Stretching. So it's pretty strong. Right. <laughs> I'm... Okay. <laughs> so this is a problem for us. Got it. It can't get into our toilets, into our plumbing, and into our wastewater system because it's not falling apart. Just doesn't break down. It's not breaking down. So it clogs pipes, causes lots of problems for you guys. Yeah, causes us a lot of problems. What do you got there? Oh, I, brought, I, I brought you a wipe that's uh, flushable from Japan. Okay, what's the and difference? And it falls apart. Ah. Completely made of cellulose, just like the toilet tissue. Falling apart, no problem. Is it as good at getting the junk off our faces as we want? I don't think there's an issue with it. I see. So the big thing here is that the toilets are not garbage cans, and we need to understand that it's only for human waste and toilet tissue. That's it. And not everything else that we apparently are putting in there right now. Unfortunately, we're putting a lot of things in there. When did you start to notice that wipes in the wastewater system were becoming an issue? Well, I've been in wastewater for over 20 years now. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> But I can tell you it's a fascinating job because okay. there's twists and turns and there's pumps and there's valves and, and it's, it's fascinating to understand that we can clean our water 
before it goes back out into the rivers, yeah. right? Where we drink it. Exactly. Pretty amazing, so actually. It is a water cycle. Okay, tell a water cycle. I like that. Uh, one more picture? You want to bring up that next one? What else you got for us here? Oh, my goodness. What is that? Oh, that's me holding a big mass of blockage from a pumping station of non-fleshable materials. So most of that is related to wipes. That's a pumping station in London, Ontario. Unfortunately. And what happens when you get a situation where that, you know, basically blocks up your pipes to such an extent that nothing can go through anymore? Well, when it can't go through, that water doesn't stop. And, and so it could flood somebody's basement. It could overflow down into the storm drain system, which goes directly to our creeks and rivers and gets no treatment. So here you would have raw sewage getting directly into our rivers, lakes. The source of our drinking water. Exactly. What do we got there now? That is one of those outlet structures um, that during a major rain event would have lots of rain and lots of uh, wastewater in there, but because there's so much garbage in the wastewater, this is what's coming out into the river. And all of that stuff would have been flushed down somebody's toilet at some point? That is correct. That's how it got in there? That is correct. My goodness gracious. Okay, what is that? Uh, that's a little um, bush that's along a... Um, a spillway mm -hmm. where there has been a combined sewer overflow and you can see that there's all that non-flushable material entangled in the bushes. So that's really concerning. Barry, where did we get the idea that it was okay to use the toilet as a garbage can? Well, I'd say in the, the mid-2000s we, we started to see more and more products come out that were labeled flushable and that created a lot of confusion for consumers. Uh, they started to think that everything was flushable. So let's you want to blame the, the product producers and the advertisers and that kind of thing. What I would like to do is I'd really like to work with them to create more uh, collaboration and outreach opportunities. Currently in Canada, it's the municipalities that are going out to make sure that our citizens know that toilets are not garbage cans. I, I say the manufacturers need to play a, a bigger role here. Well, let's hear one of, shall we hear from one of them? Here's Christine Cowell. Research and Engineering Director with Kimberly Clark, who make Cottonelle, which they say are flushable wipes. Let's hear what she has to say. Roll it, please. Kimberly Clark conducts a battery of tests with our products, both in the lab and field, to ensure that our products are safe for use within systems today. Our products begin to break up in as little as 30 minutes and break up fully in three-hour test that reflects what's actually observed in sewer and septic systems. We will also put wipes into real sewer systems to test their breakup times in a variety of real world conditions. They say they're on it. What's your response? Well, we've been working with the manufacturers and their associations for years, and we've been asking and asking and asking for change to their guidance document. To this date, we have had no changes. Would antiquated sewer systems be part of the problem here? You know, I, I would say that our sewer systems are, are not perfect, but they're only there for human waste and toilet tissue, not this other stuff. <laughs> and that is the point. Okay, let's do, Sheldon, bottom of page two here, we've got board number one that we want to do. Legislation currently under consideration is totally misdirected and will cause more harm than good, says the Association of Non-Woven Fabrics Industry. Yes, everybody's got an association. It attacks flush-friendly wipes, that are incapable of causing harm and only a very tiny part of the debris in sewers and does nothing to address the real contributors to the problem. And it needs to be enforced with fines levied on retailers, another burden to small businesses. Okay, how do you respond to manufacturers who say, we employ people, we're trying to make a living, we pay taxes, we're sorry, but bigger picture here. So internationally, um, wastewater has been working together across the globe and we have an international statement from over 25 countries, over 300 different logos from environmental groups and all that, that have said the sewer system is only for the three P's. And they are? P, poo, and paper. <laughs> That's it. So an international statement says that. You know, I, I, I don't know how many editions of this program we've done, maybe 3,500 to 4,000. I'm not sure I've ever heard those three words used in quite that combination before on this program. Say them again, just so we're on top of that. The three P's are yes. pee, poo, 
and paper, referring to toilet paper. And that's all that's safe to put in your toilet. That is correct, Steve. That's it, that's all. Okay, so people having now watched your presentation here, the main thing you want them to take away from this conversation is? Toilets are not garbage cans. As the tie says so clearly. Uh, do, do you actually wear that tie to the theater at night or anything like that, Barry? I say it's for special occasions, just like your show today. <laughs> okay, nice to know where that's special. That's Barry Orr, City of London, Ontario, Sewer Outreach and Control Inspector. Thanks so much, Barry. Thank you. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.